Alrighty, here's a video to explain how to turn this experiment, where it's just the old regular pendulum, into a graph for achieved. So we're aiming for something like this, where we have a graph, we have two lines on our graph, and we have a conclusion. So, what this means is, here's my little notes. There's only about, maybe, six things that we really have to do. We have to look at the equation given. We have to square or square root the correct thing. We have to make a graph using the idea of y equals mx. And then we have to turn bits on on the graph, like the equation and the labels. And then we have to draw a second line on the graph. And finally, we have to write a conclusion. And then hopefully we can also set some page margins. So here we go. So if you're starting from scratch, this is about as far as you've gotten, okay? So, notice none of the numbers include units. They're just numbers, so you don't want units done on these numbers here. So, the equation in the instructions was this t equals 2 pi square root of l on g. Basically, it's screaming to you to take the square root of l. You could do other things, but this equation is set up to graph t on the vertical axis and the square root of l on the horizontal axis. The easiest thing to do with this equation. So what that signifies is we have all of these numbers, but these numbers are for five periods. We want the average t. So what that looks like is we want to put it right here, the average t, it's going to be in seconds, okay? If I can type without a little zero. So, how you program Excel to do averages? You type equals, you spell average, make sure you spell it correctly, bracket, drag across the numbers you want, close the bracket, now, in this case, I also have to divide by 5, because these were the five times for 5 periods. And there you go. You can grab that little tiny box in the corner, on the bottom right, drag it down, and it does all the rest of the averages for you. So, we're close to getting our data. We're not quite there yet. Remember, we need t versus the square root of l. Now, one thing you should know. I'm going to put it down here. This is going to be my horizontal axis number, if I can spell, with a Z. And over here is going to be my vertical axis. Now, Excel will always default to put the left column on the horizontal and the right column on the vertical. You can change it, but it's the easiest thing to do, is just let it do what it wants to do. So this, we want to be the square root of L, and the units for that are going to be meters to the power of 0 0.5, the square root of meters. How we get this is we just type in equals L, whoops, equals, click on the number you want, the power of 0 0.5. So that little arrow is above the 6, and that's the square root of L. You should check it with your calculator to make sure. Okay, just check one of the rows in this with your calculator and make sure it's good. For the vertical axis, we just want the average t. If we copied and pasted this column of numbers, it will give us the wrong values because it will be looking for three numbers to average and then divide by five. So the easiest thing to do is say equals this number. Hit enter and you're done. Okay, that's the same number. So you, you grab those two. You grab the little bottom right corner, you scroll down. If you go down too far, you get the zeros, kill the zeros, and there's your data to graph. You highlight it, you insert, you select this little thing right here for a scatter graph, and you've got your graph right there. Now, how to turn on, we'll put this down here, how to turn on your axes titles is you click right here and you get your axes titles. And you really be careful here. Make sure that you label the horizontal axis the correct number, okay? In this case, it's the square, get that out of the way so I can see it, root of length, which has the units of meters to the power of 0 0.5, okay? How you know 
is if you look at the column A, it goes from about 0.8 to about 1 point, about 0.8 to about 1 point two. Okay, so there's you go. And then you look at the side numbers, and these are going from about one and a half to a little over two, which is about one and a half to a little over two. Make sure you label your vertical and horizontal axes correctly. Okay, check to make sure Excel is doing what you think it's doing. So that means this is my average period t, which is in seconds. The title, if you really want a title, you don't want to call it George or Betty. You could probably just say the average t versus the square root of l. That's all you need. Now we're really close. We're almost done. But what we probably should do is zoom in on the axis so you can see the wiggle in those dots. We're going to need to be able to see the wiggle in those dots. So how you zoom in on these dots is you trim the axes, okay? If you select the bottom numbers and you right click, you can format the axis. This pops up over here. You can change the minimum value. We don't need anything below 0.7. So if you hit enter, that's zoomed in the graph, okay? The same logic, you don't need anything lower than probably 1.5. So if you select the side, now this is on here, you change this to 1.5. Now you can actually see a little bit of wiggle in those dots. That's going to become important, okay? It's not going to become important until we get to our second line on our graph. The first line on our graph, it's really simple. You click the plus, you click the trend line, you click the little arrow, and you go into more options. On the bottom of this, the second to bottom thing, you just turn on your equation. And now we have the equation of our line of best fit. We have to replace the y with the vertical axis variable. In this case, that's capital T. And we have to replace the x with the horizontal axis variable. That's the square root of length, so l to the 0 0.5 power. So that's our line of best fit. Some people even title it line of best fit. So it's obvious. Okay. Now, the trick of level three, you're going to need two lines. I repeat, two lines on your graph. Not just your line of best fit, but what we call an error line. And our error line, the logic of our error line, is so that we have a second line crossing our line of best fit to show the wiggle in the dots. So I'm going to select the fourth and fifth so and connect those two dots. Now you could draw it by hand. You could draw it on your printout. But if you want Excel to do it, which merit comes in really handy for achieved, it's up to you. But if you want to do it on the computer, here's what you do. This is my error line. Okay. This is going to be my horizontal numbers. And this is, if I can spell, that's with a Z, not an X. There we go. That's going to be my horizontal numbers. This is going to be my vertical numbers. I want the fourth and fifth dot. I want that one and that one. So that is actually one, one, two, three, four. That's that one. So we can say equals one, two, three, that one. And it gives me that number. And then we can say equals one, two, three, four, and it gives me that number. Now to get to the fifth dot, you just say equals. These are all upside down, so I have to count up. One, two, three, four, that one. And we want equals one, two, three, four, that one. Okay, so make sure you grab the right one. So 0.989er, 0.989er is 1.936er. So how you get a second line in Excel? You select the dots, you right click, you go into add data, you want to select data, okay? You go into select data. And then you want to add a series. I just call mine the error line. And then you click on this little select range and you drag the two horizontal values that you just wanted. And you click on the bottom one and you select the two verticals. And now these two, and you hit okay. And you hit okay. And now these two little red dots are there, okay? And you want to select just the red dots, go to the plus, put a trend line, 
you don't need the equation to pass. You just need the line. What you can do is you could come down here and extend the line forward by, let's say, 0 0.1. So that's stretching that red line up. You can extend it backwards. I'm looking at the horizontal numbers and let's say another 0.1 backwards. And that's your error line. Okay? So this is our achieved level graph. Two lines, line of best fit with equation and error line. The last thing you need for passing is a conclusion. Okay? So the conclusion, we'll go back and look at the instructions. The conclusion, <coughs> the conclusion should be written, states the equation in relationship between, and compares it with what is predicted. So, what that looks like is something like this, where you have a nice general statement saying the square root of length is proportional to the period, and you state your equation that you just got off your graph, t equals 1.897 square root of L. And here's the second sentence, okay? Your results, that would, means your equation and the relationship that t is proportional to the square root, matches the theoretical relationship that you were given. So if you want to type it in, it looks like this. If you want to write it, it looks like this but you can type it in. And basically, your results pair up with the theoretical equation, the theoretical relationship, because your results, the dots are making a nice, happy, straight line. And that means, when you square root it L and graph it against T, that T was proportional to square root of L. It's really important that you have something like the second sentence on this. Otherwise, you can't pass. Okay? But that's it. This is how you do an achieved level business. Okay. Finally, if you want, what we can do is we have all of this on the screen. And if we want to print it out, it's going to be a little strange. So usually we turn the page to the landscape. And now we can see these little dotted lines. That's going to be the edges of our pages. And if we scroll down, this is going to overlap the pages. So maybe we go back to margins and we select the narrow margins. That didn't really help much. But we can take this graph and we can push it over here. And we can maybe... You just sort of play around with the pieces. You push that up a little bit. You pull up your conclusion so that it fits all on one page inside those dotted lines, okay? That's your achieved level. The merit level is a lot more mathematical. It's a whole other YouTube. Hopefully that makes sense. Practice this. Make sure you pass before you even think about getting a merit or drafting your discussion for excellence.